Have you ever gotten one of those emails that's clearly from a mass mailer that was not set up properly? It's kind of ridiculous. You get an email that says, Dear customer, thank you for purchasing such and such product from us. And it doesn't say the product. And then it goes on and on, and it's just very clear that the person didn't set up the email correctly. We don't want that to happen to you. And so I'm going to walk you through how to use templates inside of Odoo properly and test them out for yourself. Let's get started. Okay, so we're back in the Odoo demo. We want to make sure we're in developer mode and we're going to start typing email. Okay, and we'll see we have settings, technical email, email templates. That's where we want to go. So this is the central repository for all the email templates, which is how Odoo terms these mass mailing email templates. Okay, let's go ahead and find one that's going to be familiar to us so that we can work on it. Because sales is so important, Let's go ahead and look for this guy. Okay, so we're going to go to send quotation. This is one of the very key communication pieces we have with our customers. All right, let's go ahead and start at the high level with some background here. Okay, so unpacking this guy real quick. So you can see up top we have add context action, which we will go over. We have a preview, which allows us to preview this based on a specific record. So we click into that. We can see for sales order 61, this is how it's going to look. So obviously moving down, we have the name. We want to have good names so that we can find things when we need to. It applies to a specific model. So this is sales order. So we can pull information off the sales order and things linked to that. We can see this is going to be the subject of the email. It's built out all nicely and we can mess with that stuff and figure it out ourselves. The template description is just a little bit more information for when we use this later. We obviously want to make sure we describe to ourselves in the future and other people in the future why we built this thing and what it's meant to do. So let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes, the content here. So looking at this, we can see hello, your, and then pro forma invoice, a lot of stuff that's conditional on the sales order. And do not hesitate to contact us if you have any questions. Mitchell admin, which is again is conditional on the sales order. So let's take a second and peek behind the curtain. So if we double click into this, it brings up some of our little editor things. And then at the very end, if we click this, we switch into the code. So if you've had something go wrong with one of these, like horribly wrong, it's likely that you are here and not here. Now, currently, this is set up really nicely. It's something that we can see where the tags start and stop pretty well. It's all tabbed in nicely. But if we mess this up, normally when you come in here, everything is going to look like one of the worst run on sentences you've ever seen. If you have any experience with HTML of any sort, this will start to look fairly familiar. If you've worked within reports inside of Odoo or views inside of Odoo, a lot of this will also look familiar. Whether it looks familiar or not, we are actually experts at this point in copying other people's work. So we can go down through and we can look at it and say, okay, hello. I remember hello. Okay. I remember your, all right. Now, if I want to add something in here, where do I add it? Okay. You don't have to go about it this way, but it is important to know what you have here and what's going on with this. Okay. We're not necessarily going to mess with this right now, but it's important that you know that this is here. So you can come in and say, okay, if something's going wrong, why is it going wrong? And normally speaking, if something is going wrong, it's because you accidentally dropped some text inside one of these tags where it didn't belong. You can end up with some problems off of that. So if you need to clean something up, you want to come in here, go through this carefully. Grab a friend if you need a little bit of help, somebody to play solitaire from behind you, that sort of thing, right? Okay, so pause for a second here, guys. If you're not comfortable with this, editing this stuff, messing with this, but you still want to get comfortable with it, the first thing you want to do is come up top here and go to duplicate. And we want to leave that copy on there so this sticks out like a sore thumb. Okay, now that we've done a little bit of stuff to make ourselves feel a little bit safer, let's go ahead and try this out. So, dropping this guy in brings up 
all sorts of little things that we can do, okay? We can put in a bulleted list, a numbered list. I'm not gonna read all these. The biggest stuff that you'll probably use with this for is a dynamic placeholder, okay? So let's bring up dynamic placeholder here. So now we can choose our dynamic placeholder. Let's go ahead and drop in salesperson. And it's gonna ask you for a default value in case it's not set, okay? And now we have salesperson down here. Not exactly where we'd want it, but you get the point. Okay, again, because we're good at copying other people's work, we can look at this and we can kind of figure it out on our own as far as what we want to see here in the subject because it performs a bit differently here. But you see in the templates that this sale is the object. And so we'd get the company ID and the name from this. So we can throw that in other places. Again, the big thing here is to create a copy first so we can make sure we're good. If we're good with the copy, we can always go in, go to the code, and we can copy this whole thing to our original, and that will work just as nicely as if we'd been working in the original before. So let's just go over the last few bits here. So if we go out, we can stick attachments that are always the same attachment on here. Okay, this is for static PDFs, not anything that we're wanting to create inside of Odoo. Going further into this, we can set who this is from. So again, normally speaking, this is going to come from the person who actually sent the email or triggered it to be sent, but we can change that if we want to. Two emails, we can set a list of emails, or we can say it's to these partners or contacts, right? So these kind of can be used interchangeably, I should say. So if you have two partners, it's gonna pull the email addresses from the partners. If you have emails, it's just gonna be straight up those emails and you can do that by referring to the partner as well. You can obviously carbon copy people as well and you can set a reply to email address if you don't want it going to the standard Odoo catch-all. And then certainly we can schedule a send date if we want to. Uh, beyond that, settings, so we can set it to where there's some translation going on if we want to. Be careful with that, make sure and test it out first. Outgoing mail server, if we have multiple mail servers that we want to use, we can set which one it would come from. Auto delete, so this is an option that we have because Odoo likes to keep things clean. Emails take up a lot of space eventually, and so they auto delete any emails that have gone out successfully. And then as far as any reports that we want to go out with this, and these are PDFs generated inside of Odoo, this is what we would want to attach there. Okay, so the last thing I said I'd talk about, and I almost forgot to, is add context action. So if we click this, and we go to a record inside of this model, so sales orders, and we click in here, you'll see now we have an action that says send mail, sales, send, quotation, copy, which is our template here. So if you want to be able to send out this email directly from a sales order, you can now do that. So there you go, a nice little rundown of email templates so that you don't look like one of those silly people that sends you a mass mailer that doesn't really have anything specific to you. This will help you to do that. I would make sure again to duplicate, play with it, get comfortable, and then move on to the actual template that you're wanting to use. Good luck. Thanks.